fashion trends are coming at us left, right and sodding centre. Okay, and with so many things being in and almost there being so many trends that there isn't trends and but but it is a whole vortex of trends that it sometimes feels that we're in, right? So I um, have taken it upon myself to come up with eight trends that maybe you should reconsider or actually consciously avoid as though you're you're out shopping and you've seen somebody that you went to school with and you don't want to have that awkward conversation we've all been there that's the level of avoidance i'm talking about it's so easy to get sucked into buying trends that aren't even you it's happened to the best of us all right next thing you know you buy something a couple of months down the line you're like why did who did i think i this is not the woman that this is so hopefully this video will aid in avoiding that. Disclaimer, if any of the trends I'm talking about today are so inherently your style, then disregard, okay? Because I'm talking about things from a sort of seasonal trend perspective, not from the perspective of this is my personal style, all right? In that case, these aren't even trends to you. You go, you rock them, ignore me. Should we start off with the first one? Pants slash knickers as outerwear. I'm talking about your skivvies, okay? Panties, whatever word you use in your country. Your underwear as outerwear. Now I'm starting off strong with one that maybe is a little bit obvious, all right? But it still needs to be said because the runways of autumn winter 2023 are showing us many a pant on show, a statement pant as we've seen from Miu Miu, all right? Oh my gosh, encrusted in crystals and gemstones and all of that, one with tights and a hoodie, right? And before you go down that slippery slope, because a slippery slope it is, we're also seeing Ferragamo do it in maybe a little bit of more a um, chic way, possibly. We don't need to be out here feeling the wind on our cheeks on a Thursday afternoon. And the thing is, is that like, when we see fashion trends, some are really wearable, okay? Some are like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm interested in this. I can integrate this into my wardrobe. I can wear that to the office. I can wear that out to brunch. I can wear that out running errands, you know? Whereas something like this, I wouldn't even say is like an event look. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, it's my birthday. Do you wanna know what? I'm gonna go out in a pair of crystal knickers and, uh, you know, do the no pants trend. The fact that the no pants trend is even around is uh, really quite interesting. This is for fashion weeks, but I, I think I am not alone in saying that this doesn't work for the majority of us. So if by any chance you have felt a tiny bit peer pressured into jumping onto the no pants trend full force with two cheeks, maybe you want to reconsider. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, and on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Do you want to know what? Sometimes we can look to history for an indication of how things are gonna go. So when I say low rise, and whale tales, history has told us that we're gonna look back at these things and go, can't believe it, can't believe I did that. Not that long ago, 18 months ago, we were still looking back on the Y2K of it all and going, oh my gosh, you know, not the trousers that I had to shimmy up so that I wasn't showing four inches of crack to the person behind me. Right now, low rise is certainly having its 15 minutes of fame. We're seeing it in trousers, maxi skirts, midi skirts, minis even, and of course jeans. And while I know that, especially when it comes to jeans, it's so personal, it's so specific. Some people love a low rise jean, it really suits their body, all of that. This, do it. I'm biased because to me, low rise is a nuisance. There's a lot of shuffling, there's a lot of um, insecurity on my behalf that goes into wearing something low rise. And I am very much a mid rise at the very least kind of girl. Once I discovered a nice high rise, oh my gosh, my world became brighter. Going hand in hand with low rise is the whale tail. And fair enough, in today's fashion trends, we're not seeing the whale tail as thongs out as we were in the early 2000s. What we are seeing is almost like manufactured 
trousers, skirts, whatever, that look like the thong is on show, right? But it's not, it's just made to look that way. If history is anything to go by, I think we're gonna look back in like a year's time and go, oh, can't believe, can't believe I participated in that. Inquire within, am I a low rise girly? Because if you're not, don't even try. The next trend um, is clutches. Now, whilst I think that as a bag style, clutches are a necessity, right? Within a bag collection, one clutch is brilliant. Why? Events, weddings, a formal affair, a clutch always comes in handy. In more recent years, but we're definitely seeing it a lot more coming, you know, now and autumn, winter, the sort of daytime clutch in tow, nestled um, under the arm, teeter-tottering around, living your life. This is one of those pieces that you have to ask yourself, does my life lend itself to a daytime clutch, right? Because it's a commitment. No hands free. That, I'm not gonna lie to you. I tried to do one of these with one of my bags and I got a cramp. Fair enough for a moment, but I know personally, I need a handle. I need a crossbody or I need a top handle, a shoulder strap, whatever, right? Because this isn't gonna last for too long. Maybe you have children right? You definitely need to, need to be a bit hands-free. You don't know where they're going to be off to, what they're getting their hands into, all of this. Maybe for, if you want it as a bit more of a night out thing, then fine. But definitely for a daytime moment, once again, inquire within. Is this going to annoy me? Am I going to last 20 minutes and then wish that it had a strap such that I could hold it in a different way? Number four is a very specific item, but I had to include it because from the moment I saw its existence, it's annoyed me. These are the, I'm just gonna call them the Miu Miu flip flop boots. Yes, you heard me right. A combination of two shoe styles that I never thought we'd be talking about. This shoe is a kitten heel flip flop together with the calf sheath of a boot in leather, in leather, okay? The times you are wearing a flip-flop, that is a lot of foot exposure, right? This is a summer situation. So pray tell, why does it have the calf sheath? Because that to me sounds like a terrible idea. Why would I want to be restricted on one area of my body but feel the wind on another when it's absolutely sweltering outside? This, I. And, and the thing is, that's just from a practicality point of view. I mean, from aesthetics, it's not great, in my opinion. So I think that whilst I love a statement shoe, we know this. I think I'm a shoe girl before I'm a bag girl, right? I love something a bit different. But then there are also things that something a bit different, then a couple of months time, you're gonna be like, shift these onto vestiaire. Once again, if this is your style, disregard everything I've just said. Right, next trend, multiple belts slash statement belts. I love a belt for its functional purpose, right? And I think that it also has this ability to sort of tie everything together, make everything look a bit more put together. Love a belt. One thing when the Y2K trend was really picking up steam that I didn't quite prepare myself for was the resurgence of the multiple belts. Okay, layered one over the top of another, or a statement belt. The ones in particular are sort of, I don't know, sort of circles with, with metal embellishments on them, worn slung low, um, across a dress maybe, a midi skirt, maxi skirt, that kind of thing. And I think that whilst, yes, while we're in the throes of this early 2000s obsession in fashion, it may, give us a, I don't, you know what, being completely honest, I don't even think it's giving us a look, I, I don't. But, let's say, for a moment it's a serve, and then in a couple of months time, they're gonna be collecting dust in the back of your wardrobe, just like they were by the time 2009 came along. I love a pair of cargo trousers. I've recently become a cargo convert. I think that the right cargos can look really good, turn out a nice casual look, but also can be dressed up really nicely and give a bit of something. I'm a fan. 
But when it comes to like fashion trends and when you're trying to indulge in the trend, but in a way that makes sense for you, your wardrobe is going to stand the test of time a bit, then the issue arises when you indulge in the extremes, right? So the Attico Fern cargo pants are the extreme version of this trend, okay? They are oversized. They have got about 17 pockets on each leg. There's a lot going on there. They're a commitment, right? And whilst I've seen people on my Instagram wear them with like a plain simple white tank top and they're killing it, I cannot get out of my mind that these may end up going the same way as the parachute pants of past. Okay, so this is a trend that I've sort of like picked up on and I've seen it across quite a few cruise shows, um, Gucci, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, hugely neoprene. I love neoprene as a fabric. I love how it just holds its structure. And I think for specific items of clothing, it's great, okay? However, it is very thick. So for other items of clothing, it's uncomfortable. It's just not a, too much of a pleasant experience, right? So, whereas I think for skirts, yes. For some tops, if you get like a really thin neoprene, fantastic. Right jacket, the right style, it can really work. For other things, it's just not gonna be a good idea. Um, one thing that I found out in the Chanel show, there was a cute little, I think it was like a crop t-shirt or a normal t-shirt with just like a little CC um, at the neck there. I was like, oh my gosh, would love to pre-order, was talking to my, my SA, found out it's in neoprene. And even she was like, it's really thick. That is not going to be nice as an experience to wear, especially when it's meant for like a spring summer moment. The next trend is a trend that I've spoken about a lot since the beginning of the year. And this is the cartoon and novelty trend. Across brands, we are seeing this. It actually can be done in a really fun, interesting way that suits your style, right? With there being lots of different items and like you can do it in, by way of sunglasses and t-shirts and you know shoes and whatever right there's lots of ways that you can sort of dip your toe into this trend and have a lot of fun with it and still make it very true to your style however i think that there are some pieces that maybe aren't gonna stand the test of time that well. The Loewe balloon shoes. This is such a, once again, this is fashion week. This is like if you have a social calendar that requires you to sodding turn out a high fashion fashion look every Thursday night, right? This is not for, I've got a friend's birthday party. I want to, you know, have a little bit of a look with it. Let's get out the Loewe balloon pumps. I'm not talking about the strappy sandals. I'm talking about the ones that are literally made out of deflated or non-inflated balloon jackets. Balloons, no, they're balloons. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about the mischief big red boots. They were dead in the water about a week after they came out. But I feel a way that this can be done, like I said, is with something like sunglasses or Loewe does a lot of novelty shoes that are a little bit less. Once again, it's about the extremes, right? Once you get into those extremes, you then have this bit of a toss up of a, or a greater risk of hating this thing in the future or it's sort of like dying as a trend, you not being able to sort of integrate it into your wardrobe as seamlessly as something that is the trend but isn't so obviously that trend. Am I making sense? I'm talking in riddles, I hope I'm making sense. And the last sort of trend that I just wanted to stick in there, it's not really a trend, but it's just something to keep in mind. And a question to ask yourself, don't buy something that requires you to buy other things in order to execute the look. And I think that's a really telltale way of seeing whether something fits in with your personal style or not. If you're indulging in a trend, you should be able to sort of integrate it into your wardrobe with whatever you have. I don't know if I'm making sense. What do you think of these trends? I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And in the words of my father, If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.